what's up, guys? Joe Simpson, TechWake TV. You got this new fancy soundbar with Dolby Atmos, and you plug it up, and you're playing it on your system, and it doesn't sound like anything better than stereo. Well, there's a good likelihood that you're just getting stereo signal out of that soundbar, especially if you have the Sonos Arc. It's so difficult sometimes to figure out all the new technologies and syncing them all up and getting them to work together that it sometimes is not even worth the effort because the soundbar on its own sounds really good. But let me talk you through my process of arriving at where I finally got a good clean Dolby Atmos 7.1 signal, actually 7.2 signal out of the soundbar. So when I first set up my theater, I used to have like a Pioneer surround sound amp 5.1 channel. Then I upgraded to a 7.1 channel Elite Pioneer. I had the little microphone. I would adjust everything. I would get this whole thing set up. I had my own speakers that I had, some I had built, some I had bought. It sounded fantastic. I loved it, but my kids would always drive me nuts asking me how to work the dang stuff. So I just got tired of dealing with that. I pretty much converted all of my sound systems and listening in the house to Sonos. Sonos is an ecosystem that talks via Wi-Fi in the network of your home, and they can synchronize, play music individually in each location, or they can play music all together. Sonos does produce soundbars, the very first soundbar, uh, which was fed by an optical cable, and we'll talk about that in a second, was a very good step, and it was my first step into simple home theater, what I would call simple home theater, because literally I could set up the soundbar, add one of the Sonos subwoofers, and then I could put two surround speakers. And I had a really nice sounding, rich environment for viewing movies. And honestly, for most of you, you could just stop there. It's good. I mean, it's really, really good. And I had the high-end stuff beforehand. Yeah, you get better bass out of a you know, dedicated, large, large subwoofer, and you get better surround sound out of a device made just for making surround sound. But Sonos does such a nice job with the integration and the simplicity of the equipment makes it so nice that Honestly, a 5.1 channel surround system from Sonos with their original soundbar, 10 out of 10. I mean, this thing was awesome for me. I would say the only thing that it lacked was maybe those exhilarating dynamics in certain movie scenes that just didn't seem to pop as much when they did on the other theater system. But that was more like a, a volume thing than anything else. But for 98% of all of the listening and the types of things that I watch, the Sonos is perfect for that. So having that system for a few years, I decided I wanted to make the move to the Sonos Arc because it had such great praise. Everybody loved the sound of this thing, more speakers, more amplification, better surround sound. And that's where the problems began for me. I had paid such a premium price for the soundbar, I wanted to get everything I could out of it. So I started to investigate how to get Dolby Atmos out of the Sonos Arc, which if you've looked on the internet has been a topic of discussion and a difficulty for a lot of people, especially for those who set up theater systems and have projectors. So let me walk you through some of the basics and then we'll actually talk about my solution that I finally came up with and I'm gonna share with you today. It doesn't cost a ton of money and it's not terribly difficult. So let's Let's talk about audio and video connections, first of all. All right, so there's different sources for your video content for movie viewing and TV viewing. You might have a TiVo box. You might have a Blu-ray player. You might have an Apple TV, an Amazon Fire product, or a Roku, or any of the other myriad of things out there to watch you know, content for videos and audio through. Apple TV is going to be your main core device that I'm going to reference through this because I've kind of determined after trying them all that the Apple TV finally, with their latest iteration of the 4K TV, is, is probably where I'm going to land and be happiest. The one thing I don't like most about the Apple TVs up until the latest version is their remote. I hate how touchy it is. I can be sitting on my couch and bump it with my elbow. And next thing you know, I've skipped back 10 minutes and the whole family's yelling at me because the darn movie, you know, backtracked or something like that. So let's talk about audio and video. You know about the sources. There's several ways to connect for Dolby surround sound. The most common way is optical cables. And most devices nowadays have the optical cable outputs on them or some devices like the Apple TV puts their, their information out via HDMI. Now, there's different types of devices like switches 
you know, little matrix switchers that have optical out and different choices of audio outputs. But up to this point, it's been optical output for the digital surround sound. So HDMI came out and it was a single cable that simplified your video connections and you just plug it in and it carried a large bit of data across one cable and it worked perfect. And then it got to the point where the HDMI carried all the audio stuff too. So literally it simplified the TV connections to your surround system. You just plug in the HDMI, plug it into your theater system and you were ready to go. If you had a device like a DVD player and it needed to play its video through the TV, right? Well, the TV would then maybe maybe have an HDMI output, but it didn't necessarily carry the 5.1 channel surround out with it. And so they created this thing called an ARC, an audio return channel. So you could plug in, say, on a TV, three devices in HDMI 1, 2, and 3, switch between those devices, and whatever signal went into that HDMI port, the TV had like a master HDMI out maybe to your theater system, which would carry then back um, the audio channel. Or you would just use one of the designated audio return channel ports right? So if you had three inputs and you had a DVD player and an Apple TV, the third input for HDMI might say ARC. Well, that's where you'd plug in your sound bar or your theater surround and the 5.1 channel surround would be carried back out from the TV from there. It's like a pass-through thing. And it didn't always work perfect. Some TVs did it differently than other TVs and you ran into a problem if you only had one HDMI in and it was an ARC channel. Well, then you could only have really one device. It was just kind of confusing and a pain in the neck. So then they came out with something called EARC, which is enhanced ARC. Now on the ARC, which is the 1.4 HDMI format, the audio return channel would bring 5.1 channel surround only or 7.1 or whatever. Um, the EARC is an enhanced ARC and just think of it as a, just a bigger highway for data. Uh, it had a 2.1 HDMI channel, which would carry up to 8K. And then you would have your audio return channel, which would carry everything up to Dolby Atmos, which is, I think, the latest, greatest thing for right now. Here's where you run into some problems. Here's a couple places that you'll stumble. First of all, you have to find the device that will put out Dolby Atmos. There's a couple layers of the supply of the Atmos signal. Dolby Atmos comes to you off of a device, either a Blu-ray, which would be the simplest, right? You buy a Blu-ray, it says Atmos on it, you put it in an Atmos compatible Blu-ray player, you hit play, you use the HDMI out, you get Atmos. It's pretty simple, straightforward. That's an expensive way to digest movies because you're buying all your Blu-rays to watch your stuff. So you may not want to go only with that route. Apple TV is probably the most versatile because it offers the Atmos 7.1 channel output. It also offers more streaming content. So that matters too. So when you're buying these uh, Amazon Fire Sticks or Amazon Fire Cubes or these Roku devices, you have to do some research and say, you know, what streaming service on that device gives me Atmos? And some of them will give you Atmos on some devices, but not all of them will give you Atmos on all devices. So Apple TV is the most umbrella inclusive device with streaming service supply of Atmos content that I found. Now we have a device, say an Apple TV, that can play a multitude of streaming services, which all offer up to 4K video with uh, Dolby Atmos. And you need the HDMI 2.1 format cabling for this. So you can get the source. Now you have to walk that source over to a surround sound system. The sound bar incorporates all the different speakers that you would normally have to embed in the wall in the sound bar. So obviously they're emulating or faking the sound with delays and reflections and things like that. Whereas the other system would use speakers directly placed where they would emit the sound where they need to. You can get a great feel and in, in, you know, an enveloped sound field with the Dolby uh, Atmos off of the Sonos Arc. I can attest to that for sure. First of all, sound bars can be picky with their signal. I know the Atmos that goes into the Sonos Arc, it's not always uh, accepting of the signal that it gets. So you have to feed it exactly the right signal. I don't know if the other sound bars are like that. I don't own them. Um, but it can be kind of tricky. The other thing is when you introduce a projector into the mix and your projector is here and your sound bar is here, right? You obviously can't run the same cable for an audio return channel. So if you have a TV, your TV is close to the sound bar 
so you can use the audio return channel right off the TV. And a lot of projectors don't have the ARC or the eARC channels. So you have to fake it or make it. You know what I mean? Walk with me here for a second. You have an Apple TV that sits over here in a cupboard. You have a sound bar on the wall and a projector over your head. The Apple TV only has one HDMI out. So if I take that HDMI to my projector, I'm not going to get sound out of my sound bar. And, oh, okay, well, I'll just take a big, long optical cable out of my Apple TV over to my soundbar. Well, now I'm down to 5.1 channel surround, so that doesn't work. You have to have some type of multiplier or splitter that will take the original Apple TV signal, take it into a device that will peel off the audio and create an audio return channel and peel off the video and send the video to the projector and the audio return channel to the soundbar. The problem is there's not many people that made a device to directly address this issue. There was a lot of devices that had like multiple HDMI inputs with an optical out. So you could have your optical out to your soundbar. And only recently, I think it's a company called Arcana. I think it's Arcana. Maybe it's a different company name, but I think the device is the Arcana. And it's like 200 bucks. It comes from England. And from what I hear, it works perfectly great. But there's been some companies that have popped up on Amazon that I've been interested in, and I finally found one that works perfect for me. So our plan of attack today is going to be to use a Apple TV with an HDMI out to an input on a switch that has two outputs. This two outputs will be used one for the audio to the soundbar, one to the video to the projector. The settings on this box matters, but the nice thing is I can attest that yes, it does work and yes, it sounds great. And I think the Dolby Atmos is worth the price of the switcher. So if you can manage the cabling and manage the switcher price, it's a very low investment for getting Dolby Atmos to your soundbar. Let's talk a little bit about this device and what it can do. First of all, here's a picture of what's called the AV Star. And I'll put the link below for this device. You can order it on Amazon and get it and use it for your system. If you look at the front, there's a whole bunch of switches and it looks a little intimidating. Um, well, first of all, there's two big round buttons and you'll notice on these two buttons, one says the input and that's where you pick what's going in. You could have a DVD player and an Apple TV. You could have a, um, Roku and an Apple TV. Okay. So when you look at the front of this device, you have input selection, you have the EDID. I don't really know what that stands for. I put, I set it to 4k 7.1. You can change that, but if you change it to 5.1, you're only going to get five channel surround. So I put it to 4k 7.1. And then I go over to the output two section where you see it says splitter mode and soundbar mode. I set it to eARC ARC. So that says, okay, you have two outputs. You can see them represented right there in the first box. This is output one and two output one is going to go to the projector. Output one is going to go to the projector. Output two is going to be selected as the soundbar mode eARC, and that's going to go to the soundbar. One other adjustment that I did make when I hooked this up, I have a 1080p projector. I set the output one to the 4K to 1080p setting. So I turned, I pushed it down. And um, actually, I pushed both of them down to 1080p because really it's a moot point on output two. It's the eARC channel only, so I didn't need a lot of data. So I just thought, hey, rather than complicate things, let's push both of these toggles to the down position, which would down convert any 4K material down to 1080p because that's the maximum resolution on my projector. One nice benefit to using this device with my projector that I noticed is I have more resolution than I need coming out of the 4K Apple TV. Now remember, I bought the 4K Apple TV only to achieve the Atmos output. The other Apple TVs uh, don't have that. It has to be a 4K TV, Apple TV box or higher. So I pushed it down to the 1080p, but one thing I did notice is I get a lot less banding and blocking in the dark areas of my signal because what's happening is this device is down converting a high resolution image, 4K, down to a really good resolution image, 1080p. And for some reason, the output from this device is so much cleaner than the standard 1080p output from my Apple TV. And I don't really know why, but it just looks great. So I can tell you, you will get a video improvement if you're using a 1080p projector. You can test it and, and feed back to me on that, but 100%, it's really, really nice. So on the backside, you see the HDMI in and out. 
you see the TV, uh, CEC TV out, which is the HDMI one that goes to the projector, and you see the ARC soundbar, which is going to go to the uh, Sonos soundbar. And in my case, I didn't use the FPDIF output. Um, you could do that, but I don't know that there's any need to hook anything up there. So you can use this device in two modes. You can either use it in what's called splitter mode, where you can set the device to have two outputs of the same signal, which I don't find to be useful. Um, but if you wanted to display to a group something you're doing on a computer, let's say you're at a bank and you want to share your screen with the customer, you could, you could hook up two screens with HDMI. They could view one another. That's not really that big of a trick. The other one is the switch mode, which switches between two different uh, devices. And that's pretty basic and simple. It's not a real complex thing. So here's the critical part, the soundbar supported on HDMI 2 out only. So what you want to do is make sure your Sonos Arc is connected to the output 2 or the HDMI 2, and you want to set that output 2 to Arc or eARC. And then you want to set your audio to 4K 7.1. So last but not least, here's a graphic on all the things that could be hooked up to here. First of all, you have an infrared repeater. So you can stuff this thing away in a closet and put that little infrared repeater. It has a little remote that actually works pretty good. You can plug anything in from Blu-rays to PS5s, Xboxes, Nintendos, Apple TVs, all that type of stuff. Then you have a power connector, and then you have SPDIF, which can go out to an amplifier for surround sound, or you have the eARC arc output, which will go to sound bars, which will enable you to use, as shown in the bottom, the projector and the sound bar in tandem. This really does accomplish what it is you're trying to do. So get this device, get it set up. Let me know if you have any questions. Um, I hope I was descriptive enough on all the settings and how this thing works, but I can tell you 100% that with this AV Star unit, I can plug in uh, my projector and my soundbar, set the settings properly, and when I turn on Sonos, the telltale sign is when you play something that has Dolby Atmos as the encoding audio system, you see it show up on the Sonos playback display of that particular room that you're playing. So whenever I play something that's like a modern release and it's in Dolby Atmos, the Atmos symbol comes up and I can definitely tell an audio difference. It gives you more of kind of like a full spatial sound instead of just a left, right behind you type of thing. Now it's not crazy. You still get the distinct rear and the distinct front, left, right, but you do now get more of an enhanced overhead. So like when you have planes doing flybys from starting from the rear to the front, you hear it begin in the rear, but you do get that sense of something over you when it flies over, um, you know, gunfire ricochets, different sounds. It's just one more step closer to reality in sound that really makes the experience for, you know, movie viewing. So check this out, add it to your system. Let me know what you think. And if you have questions, by all means, hit me up because this stuff's not easy. So you can easily get lost. And uh, good luck. Uh, let me know if this thing works for you or any pitfalls or, or drawbacks that you come across, because I definitely want to share it with everybody and be open. And I uh, hope you guys have a good weekend. I'll talk to you soon. Later. Hey.